Hey guys, it's Carol, and thank you for stopping by for my stitching update. It is May 31st, 2022, and I want to give a really big, I don't even know if it's a shout out. Okay, so let's start. James the PH Stitcher so kindly shouted me out on his last video, and I had no idea until someone left a comment, which I still need to reply to. It was a holiday weekend, that's, that's my excuse, but like I said, I just thought that was amazing. So if you're a new viewer because you've come here courtesy of James, thank you so much. And it occurs to me like, first of all, so if you haven't checked out his channel, go check it out because he really has some beautiful mirabilias that he's been working on. And also his Bella Filipinas. I have not actually stitched any of that designers, but I really find like the Instagram awesome. So also, because I figure if someone did me a shout out, I'm gonna pass it along. Um, two of my current favorite floss tubers, Backcountry Stitcher and the Seattle Stitcher. Both of them work on the sort of things that I love to see. So if you're interested in like what I'm working on, check out what they're doing because it's, I'm not gonna say it's the exact same, it's not, but it's really cool and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. Okay, so now I have five whips for this week, a little bit of talk about plans, and then I'm gonna go over my June goals because I have learned that I need to actually set some goals to make something happen. And after spending all of May kind of drilling down into data points on how much to stitch on a routine basis and what kind of projects I like to work on for how long, I think I have a way of setting up a June that'll actually work out for me. So start off, I'm gonna go straight into the whips. Piece number one this week is the Prairie Schoolers of Prairie Garden, and I use this as my travel stitching for this week. It went with me to kids' activities, and I got a little bit done, considering that this was kind of a last minute, hey, I just feel like working on it, I think it's fantastic. So here it was last time. And this is what we have for today. As you can see, I have started in the lower right-hand corner. So this is the furthest motif over. Um, this is, as far as this pattern is coming over towards the edge, everything from here is straight on up. I think these are pansies. Not really certain. No, no, it's the great purple color that's seen up here in the thistle. And I am just really excited to pick this one back up. It worked out really well for when I took it out for travel stitching because the, most of the green is the same color. It was just nice to start working in the box here. And I'm thinking that this one might be become my next focus piece. We'll come back to that when we deal with June goals. As I've indicated in previous videos, I've decided to go back and forth between the Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along from 2020 and the one from 2021. So this time frame covered 2020, which is a family patchwork sampler. And I'm kind of excited. I'm not gonna tell you that I'm usually far into it, but I did, this one's actually January. I wasn't working in January. I was working in May. Very exciting which I mean, given that it's the last day of May, uh, well, can't win them all, but I'm happy that I got down there. So here's where I was last time. And this is where it is today. As you can see, I have indeed continued further down. Um, the page break is about here, um, roughly. I mean, I don't remember quite off the top of my head. All I know is that I got to put the January page down and pick up the May page. And of course, when I did that, like, see how this is all light and airy and this is like super dense. So of course I would immediately run into um, kind of not really the hardest stitching on here. It's not, none of it's particularly difficult, but it was a little more time consuming. So whereas I had been like booking right along, coming down and then I hit this and it was like thud, stop. But that's okay. Um, I. I'm really loving the look of this piece. Um, the 924 that I'm, the DMC 924 that I'm using, I love how much it stands out on the white vertical. It's, so I spend a lot of time worrying about whether or not I do a good job picking colors because I don't personally feel like I have much talent for it. So when I have something that I'm just like, oh, this is working for me, like this is, I'm just so excited. But yeah, this will come back out 
and you'll see it in two videos from now. My primary whimsy piece of the week, and in this case, I, whimsy is anything that is a non-mirabilia, because those are on a road to pretty strict rotation. These are the ones that I just say, hey, what do I feel like picking up and playing with this week? And it was Rosewood Manor streaming to Tulips. I don't know why I haven't gotten further in this project before now, because now when I pick it up, I don't want to put it down. The colors, there's only six, but they are all so amazing. And I just, every, every time I pick this up, it's like, it really is saying, please keep going, keep going. And one of the things I'm also enjoying is you can see from this, the word tulip is backstitched a lot throughout the project. So I've been doing all the backstitching as I go along. And it's just sometimes nice to have something that's not just making the X's. So even something as simple as doing backstitch in the middle of the project, I find is just kind of refreshing and different. And also I just, oh, I love it. Here's where it was last time. And this is where we are today. As you can see, more um, backstitching, so the tulip going everywhere. Also, kind of importantly for me that I'm really happy about, this motif, which features pretty much every color that is on here, I got done and I had started doing these leaves back when I had started this in May 2020 and I couldn't remember what my plan was as far as I'm not using the called for Weeks Dye Works for the green. It's supposed to be grasshopper and bullfrog, the beautiful colors, I'm sure, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to use the DMC because I already had a bunch of DMC around. So I knew that the bullfrog, which is the darker of the two greens, is roughly equivalent to DMC 730. Okay, that's cool. I did eventually, and I knew at some point that I had obviously used, based on this, the lighter color looks like DMC 734, but I couldn't find my 734, I found 732, so that wasn't quite a match. And I wasn't loving, like, this is pretty, but it needed a little bit between the darker color and the light color. And through here, I apparently looked like I had messed with, like, one strand of each color. I don't really know what my thought process was. I mean, I did it two years ago. Who knows? So when I'm sitting here this week and trying to be like, well, I want to finish this out. So what I ended up doing is I've actually pulled off, so 732, 734, both are now being used for the grasshopper. Kind of just however I feel like, I like that it's lighter. It's noticeably lighter, but adding in the 732, I think really helps that it's not quite as much contrast. And if I find a spot where I'm like, eh, you know, this could benefit from a slightly darker color, okay, then I might do the one strand of like the 730 plus one strand of 732 again. I don't know, I'll figure it out. But just, I really like how this has all come together. And so one giant motif win, this is the smaller motif that I did first. And so I think my general, I'm gonna continue up towards this corner since the actual center of the piece is like right here, roughly. Um, and for whatever reason, I clearly decided to do the upper right hand quadrant. Again, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. Don't know, but I did uh, take the time and go ahead and put this in my, created my nice little graph with all the grid squares. And as I get each set of 100 done, filling it in, but it means I actually have an idea of how far along I am on this. So for my whips going forward, I'm going to make a point of telling you what percentage complete I am. And for this one, this is 18% done. So I guess surprising to me, I'm like, wait, I only have to do this four more times and the whole thing's done? This doesn't seem like a lot, not really. So I'm like, this one's just, it's fun. Like I said, when I sit here and work on it, a lot of it seems like it seems to happen pretty quickly. It's not gonna be my focus piece yet because obviously I'm much farther along with the Prairie Garden, but I can see this one getting done before the end of summer. So have, don't have it, it's not all the way onto a plan yet, but it is definitely like as far as like me picking it up and giving it attention, I definitely know it'll be back getting worked on in the next couple weeks. So my rotation mirabilia for this week is Royal Holiday. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and make a note. Autumn Queen, I went ahead and she got a week time out because I was just after dealing with the chronic that I mentioned on my last video, 
I realize that part of it is that by do working on her every single week without fail, it's not that I don't love working on her because I really do. It's just I needed a break. So what I did, spent the time working on Royal Holiday and it got about as much as I normally would do in a rotation where I'm doing Autumn Queen and Royal Holiday in the same. So I'm really happy with that. So actually, let's just go ahead with that. Here's where I was last time. And this is where we're at today. So I don't know how well it translates on the screen. I'm trying to tell my monitor is like tiny, so I can't actually see. But I started doing the gray right here that is for her glove. And you can see this is where like the top of the glove and the sleeve is. So, and some more of the red, like things are happening, like making this interesting and not just a giant blob of gold and brown. Um, I also, I mean, because all, all of my projects, if they are on paper charts, I'm now just going ahead and putting down because I feel like, oh, I like to see that I'm getting progress done. This one is the saddest though, because despite like, this is not a small amount of stitching, it is only five complete grid squares. So per my, the way I, because they're in, part of it is that there's some beading that goes in through here that is right now acting as a, I can't finish out that grid square and I'm not gonna do the beading until later, but I'm like crossing a whole bunch of squares. So per my chosen method of tracking my paper chart progress, I only have 500 stitches done. Okay, this is clearly much more than 500 stitches, but that 500 stitches means that this is considered 1% done. One. Yeah, whatever. Um, this one was a lot of fun. I did find that there is, I ha apparently, I don't know when I bought this chart. It was before I moved the first time. So it was probably sometime 2015. But the copy I got is like a one of the 2006 copyright and it has a boo-boo like right here. And I was like, uh, cause I'm staring, actually there's a couple. Honestly, there's a couple, but there's on the um, errata chart on the Mirabilia website, they only have like the one listed. Um, so a couple of these I've been kind of staring at and going, did this get like proofed before it got published? Uh, I mean, they're easy enough fixes because it's like really obvious, like when it, there's this one that's not done right here. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, there's one right here. And per the chart, the symbol is gray. The gray is for the glove. The glove is not right here. It's really clear. It's supposed to be like this gold brown tone. I don't know, but like I said, I found a couple of those. And then, so I'm really spending time like looking at the, and the model stitcher clearly didn't stitch some of these weirdness. So I don't know if whatever, I mean, all this feedback, it would be like, you know, 15 years ago. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but just like pay attention. If you see something where you're like, that symbol doesn't make sense, you know, trust your gut. The chart isn't always right. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> And anyway, but yeah, this one has been a lot of fun. I really, really loving the um, the red tones through here, particularly because they have that, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. I'm like not pulling the, my color words very well here. Um, it is a very blue toned red. So you can see like this color right here, which I believe is 777, it, um, it pulls very purple. And so it's just, I love the contrast with the warm tones of her dress. It is so cool. And I have, I mean, uh, this is pretty much most of her bodice up to the uh, cape is gonna be right here. So I'm just, I'm looking forward to this. my plan is I'm going, going for her head and then I'm gonna fill it down. So hopefully next time this one comes out, I can, get a few more grids, grids filled in so that it doesn't have to be stuck in 1% progress. So my second Mirabilia for the week is the Stargazer. And I believe I mentioned last week that I felt like I just didn't get enough time working on this one last time so that I wanted to come back this week and fill her in. And actually, so that's what I ended up doing instead of Autumn Queen altogether is I was just having so much fun with this. And 
I love this pattern. I mean, I feel like I say this about like all my patterns because I, I like all of my projects, but there are some that you just love and this is, this one is love, definitely. So here's where she is last time. And this is where we're at today. I basically have kept filling in more down here and is the uh, roughly right here actually bought this part of the ribbon right here marks the halfway point on the chart where you flip from one side of the page to the other so all of this is actually like from the back side of the chart and just filling in lots i am um, i have done almost all the dmc on there's a little bit over here like a little bit then it's like six stitches and then I have one color that's just missing like I'm sitting there yesterday because I decided to start filling in more than just the dark blue so I was like oh, okay there's a lighter blues right here and I can't find it like it got up and walked I have all the rest they're either on a project card because I've already cut them to the 18 inch lengths that I like or the rest of them are still sitting in skeins because I've been I've discovered that if I do too much of like winding and cutting and basically putting stuff on the project card that it's less fun than if I um, honestly just stitch and when I run into the color I do it at that point. All of the rest of the skeins are together except for that one. So I'm gonna have to go buy a new one because I'm not gonna turn my house upside down trying to find a single skein of floss. Like this is ridiculous. But anyway, with the exception of like the little bit that's right in here, all the DMC, oh, well, and I mentioned over here, but whatever. There's really not that much left on DMC on the top, which would just leave all of this for beading. And this one, I actually, because there is so much beading in every single one of these grid squares that if I chose to do the completionist, where it's like, okay, everything in that uh, 10 by 10 grid, uh, block is done in order to be kind of discompleted, I would, this thing would be literally sitting in like 10% complete until I do all the beading, at which point it's gonna like race to 100 and that's not realistic. So for this project, because each one of these blocks has de about roughly 25 to 30% beaded, I'm when I get all the DMC done, I am doing them in a color pencil and counting them as half. So it seemed to me like a good way to account for the fact that you know, I am getting progress done, but I don't want to feel like, oh, I'm getting progress done, but I'm not, it's, you know, not changing. So that is where this piece is um, said. So these ribbons, like filling them in. I am kind of looking forward to seeing how the underskirt here is gonna look, because it looks so very blue to me compared to the colors, these, these I mean, these, you can tell, the ribbons are not the same set of colors as here for the dress, but they kind of seem to work together. And for me, I'm just not, I'm trusting the blues will work. I am doing this on the same color fabric that's called for. So if not the exact same color, like really close section now that I think about it. Hold on. It is called for on amber or toasted almond. Uh, I'm doing it on raw natural, but I think when I looked, they were almost the same so I'm not too worried about that I just want to see how it all works I think it's the case much like a lot of times with the colors with Mirabilia is what I end up having to do is say I don't see it but I'm gonna trust that the color combinations make sense and you know what I haven't been steered wrong yet even when I think that they're weird then you put it all together and you're like no nope, I see it um, so that's like I said I'll try I think this is gonna look awesome though once I get more filled in down here, but I love this project. I love it so much. So I actually feel bad that I'm gonna put her back on the rotation. Not gonna see her again for three weeks, but what a blast stitching on it. Oh, and just so that I am clear and have shared it, the Stargazer is roughly 11% complete. Okay, I iron my projects before I show you the weekly progress but the stuff that I think that I want to work on this week it's like all folded up and so I don't actually have it ready to like beautifully show you um so I'm gonna see if I can do like an insert of what I'm gonna work on this week 
here. Plans for this week. I'm going back to my normal rotation for my Mirabilias, which means that Autumn Queen will be coming back out, but I'm also adding in Lady of the Mist, which of all my new Mirabilia starts this year has received the least attention. I am going to also be working in the Fruit of Plenty. I'm going to just focus on doing the January page. I debated what I wanted to do for my whimsy pieces this week, and then I realized that for me, I had started working on the corner motif for a prairie garden, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that. I'm also going to bring back out Ave Maria. It's a easy to work on piece and if I get a little bit of work in it I'll be happy but it's not going to be a primary focus this week. This week I'm really kind of feeling a new start. I don't need a new start. I mean I really should like finish up the stuff I'm working on but I'm feeling it. I have 14 cross stitch whips and one needlepoint whip and the needlepoint whip is probably closer to hibernation right now. It got hot this week. I don't know that I really want to mess with wool. And more importantly, it's on a, it's on squirrel rods. They're not good ones. Like they are the cheap ones. Do not recommend if you're gonna do needlepoint, please put them on like the good, like a good frame. I don't have it on a frame because it's too big. I guess at the time I thought, okay, I'll try this whole scroll thing. They're, it's the split rods, they do not hold tension whatsoever, and mm, no. So I honestly need to get like a new set of bars for that and like start over, and I just don't want to. So I really only have 14 whips right now, and it means I want another one. And what, more importantly, I'm kind of feeling like opening a kit. So why do I bring this up to you? I'm gonna show you my two choices, and then I need your help because I left to my own devices, will dither about it, and then do nothing. So, I'm gonna show them to you now. The first piece I'm thinking of is the Basilla Summer Symphony from 1994. It's, I don't, it's just, summer, it's summertime out, I'm kind of feeling it. Uh, all the flowers, this would be a really cool one. The other one I'm thinking of is the Mareka, Mare I don't even know how you say the brand. I just want to tell you that, like it makes me feel really bad. So, um, but this one is called Visit Venice and again it has that, for me it has, she's wearing a strapless dress, like it looks like nice warm weather, so, and also Venice is a really cool place, like super cool, would love to get back. Um, so I'm thinking of one of the, okay, so this or this, lots of glare, sorry y'all. And what I'm hoping, unfortunately YouTube doesn't let you create polls with under 500 subscribers, so I'm gonna do this in the comments section. Please tell me one, either, you can just say Venice or Summer. I, yeah, call this one Summer, call this one Venice. You just give me one word or however much you feel like writing. I mean, it's cool, I like all comments. But what I'm gonna do is this Sunday at noon, after I'm done with breakfast post-church, I will see what has more like picks and whichever one you guys pick is the one I will start and work on Sunday afternoon. Um, it, by the way, I'm normally, personality-wise, I'm kind of a control freak, so the idea of me saying, do whatever, um, this is actually kind of exciting. So, um, because I'm, I'm not the one making the decision. Uh, it's pretty neat. Like I said, either one, they are about month of May with figuring out what I do stitching wise. So what I ended up doing is I have a daily goal of roughly 300 stitches. And 300 stitches is not like a hard and fast because sometimes I get to like, we'll say 250 and be like, no, close enough. And then there's the days that I do like 400, 500 and be like, yeah, that's good. And I don't count it like a head for the next day. So I use a um, task app on my phone to kind of force me to get stuff done. So every day right now I have a recurring task of 300 stitches. Um, it's been working actually really well for me. It's the right amount where I feel like I'm picking up and touching of projects on a weekly basis without getting overwhelmed by it. And so what I'm gonna do is now that I know this about myself, kind of figure out like, okay, if I set these smaller goals, how does it translate? I'm out of battery, okay. 
So for this week, or not for this week, um, so for this month, one of the things that I realized I'd really like to do is to get a page completion on one of the modern folk embroidery cells. I don't, I don't even have a preference on which one yet. I haven't decided. Probably whichever one when I pick it up that I just make more progress in and like literally just get one entire month done. Not, not worry about going to an adjourning month. None of that. Just get done. See how that goes. So now that I've just talked it out it's loud, I'm thinking that probably the Fruit of Plenty is gonna be the answer. I finish up the January block on it, and that would be, we'll call it, a goal for this month. Um, a Prairie Garden. You've seen how close I am. I have two thirds done as far as the motifs. I am well into the ninth motif. I had to, sorry, do math there. Um, well into that ninth motif. I really think I can get it done. Um, it's been hanging around for a while. I'm going to pick it up and enjoy it. It's not ever one that really says, please, please work on me. It's, it's like a quiet project, if you will. Like when I work on it, I like it, but I have to tell myself that I need to work on it, which says it needs to be done. And that way I can frame it and put it on my wall and be happy. So that is something that hopefully by June 30th, I'll have a completion. Okay. Um, my birthday is this month. No, June. And so what I'm going to do is start a new full coverage piece because why not? Um, I've been watching just various floss tubers. And I mean, obviously I have a full coverage. I have a hate working on right now, but it's a winter one and it's cool, but I don't, it's also really big. It is over 400,000 stitches, which I don't know. I haven't even decided what I want to do as a new full coverage. So I haven't even bought anything. Good thing my birthday is not this week. I do have fabric. I have um, a fat half of, I haven't decided if I'm going to do, I have a fat half of 18 count and I have a fat half of 22 count. Um, and I think I'm going to work, try those. Um, my current hate is on a 25 count Lugana. I do not love it because it is too small of a count for using two threads and it is too big for using one thread full cross. Like I really would need, I probably should step to like a 28 count if I were going to do um, one over one full cross or two over one 10 stitch. I haven't decided. So I wanted to, I was kind of thinking like, well, maybe I'll just go big because there's something to be said, honestly, for some of the bigger projects. So I don't know, but I do want to start a new one and I'm going to go ahead and do that this month. And then last, Autumn Queen. I want to get her to 50% complete. Like I want the bottom to be done and I can do it. I actually think that having taken the last 10 days and not worked on her, I, I want to again. So I think it's doable. I think all of these are doable. Basically, it's one good thing to kind of work on each week is something to like emphasize, but it still leaves me room to do the stitching that I've been doing along the way. So hopefully you found that of interest. Um, I hope that you have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.